I'm from Hans's workshop. <laughs> it is the only place that is not windy right now that I can go into besides my house. So I wanted to talk to you today about heirloom tomatoes. This isn't the best setting for heirloom tomatoes, but we do what we gotta do, right? So <laughs> anyway, uh, heirloom tomatoes, why are they so awesome? They are one of my favorite treats in the summer. Uh, I think it's been about seven years since I've actually bought a tomato at the store. I know that sounds really, really crazy, but when you have had a delicious tomato like this, you'll never go back to the grocery store tomato again. I don't care how bad you want it. So for me to talk to you about why heirloom tomatoes are so great, I have to tell you why grocery store tomatoes are not great. So. The tomatoes that you can find at the grocery store, they're not bred for flavor. They are bred for production. They're bred for uniform shape and size. They are bred so that the vines aren't sprawling so it's easier to grow. So the heirloom varieties are passed down from generation to generation. These are the varieties that our grandparents and our great grandparents grew. And they are known for their flavor and their aroma and their deliciousness. Um, but the other problem with grocery store tomatoes is that they're not picked ripe. They are picked hard as a rock. It's what's called the breaker stage. And the breaker stage means they just have a touch of color. And these large scale tomato farms, the billion dollar in industry, they pick their tomatoes at this breaker stage and they ship them to a warehouse. Um, and they have about two weeks from the breaker stage before they turn red. But that's not fast enough for for these uh, companies and the grocery stores want a red tomato they can't sell a green tomato so they use a gas it's called ethylene gas and they gas the tomatoes to make them ripen the problem is is that the flavor and the texture and the aroma all the wonderful things that we love about tomatoes those never get past that unripe stage so what you're tasting when you buy a tomato at the store is this lifeless tasteless terrible hard tomato so heirloom varieties of tomatoes, they're not bred to be shipped. They're not bred to be put into a truck and driven all across the country to your grocery store. So what that means is they are not a variety that can typically be found in the store. So you have to go to a farmer's market or a farm stand. You have to join a CSA. You have to grow your own to be able to get these delicious heirloom tomatoes. So that is actually I think a really awesome thing because you can know exactly who grew your tomatoes right did you also know that grocery store tomatoes those standard red hard tomatoes while they were bred for productivity and uniform shape and being able to transport them you know thousands of miles the problem is they got this mutant gene I know it sounds pretty sci-fi right but they got uh, there's this mutant gene that while it makes them ripen all at one time so it's a solid red color what it actually did was also lessen the lycopene content and lycopene is the wonderful antioxidant that's inside your tomatoes lycopene is great for your skin it's great for your heart it's great at helping your body fight certain types of cancer cells so you want lycopene in your tomato ah! <laughs> but the problem is they're slippery little tomatoes. Um, the problem is, is that those grocery store tomatoes, they just lack the nutrition that the heirlooms have. So here's the deal. When you get an heirloom tomato, chances are they're not all going to be the same color. They're ripen at different stages, and that's okay. That just means you know you have more lycopene in your tomatoes, and that is a good thing. So I'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite varieties. Uh, the one that I just dropped, this is called a striped German. It is absolutely gorgeous. But guess what, guys? It gets cracks sometimes. This cracks actually because I just dropped it. <laughs> but there's another crack here kind of at the top. Um, and that just happens. Heirlooms are extremely fragile. The trade-off is they're delicious, but sometimes they are not going to be as beautiful tomatoes as you would wish. Here's another one you can kind of see. There's a crack here and a scarring here. Here's a really ugly one, um, but really delicious one. This is a black crim. Look at how deformed this tomato is. It does not look like a typical tomato that you would find in the store and that's a good thing. You want to find the goofiest, ugliest tomatoes you possibly can. This one is delicious. I love this one. Um, here's another striped German just in a much larger size. So see how it's not a uniform shape. They can come in all different sizes and shapes. It has lots of different colors to it. That's a good thing. My all-time favorite 
all-time favorite. We did a tomato testing last year, and nobody believed me at how good these were until they tried them, and then we sold out for like three weeks in a row. Cherokee Green. Oh, it looks so ugly. And in fact, a lot of people think it's not ripe. It's ripe. So see how it's kind of got this yellowish, orangish tinge to it? Um, that means it's ripe. Plus, it's soft. If you don't believe me, just wait till the end of the movie because I'm just gonna, just gonna take a big bite out of this tomato. Finally, this one is, I always get them mixed up. It's either Prudence Purple, and it's funny because it's not purple. It's either Prudence Purple or it's Rose, or it's Rose de Burn. And I can't ever remember. Hans knows. I'm not very good at it. But um, as you can see, there's cracks here. It's deformed. It's really rugged on the top. It's got this big rough patch right here. That is a great great tomato you guys this is a wonderful tomato so I know in the description yesterday I kind of talked about why are heirlooms a little bit more expensive well because they are so fragile that we probably actually compost or eat 30 percent of the tomatoes that the plant produces 30 percent is pretty um, is actually a pretty conservative estimate so they will crack right on the plant um, the, the tomato hornworms get them. Uh, they're just, they're, they're a hard tomato to grow no matter your level of expertise. And so we have to compost up to 30, sometimes even 40% of the tomatoes that we grow. Those are going to the chickens, they're going to the pigs, they're going to the compost pile, they're going to us. We don't actually get to eat the perfect tomatoes that, uh, that come off the plant. Those have to go to the market or the CSA. Um, so there is so that's part of the reason why they're expensive they're just really not an easy plant to grow um there's a tremendous amount of waste you guys typically want a better looking tomato than those 30 percent so we have to save those to bring to market um the other reason why they're a little bit more expensive is because i was i just mentioned the tomato hornworm these guys are these big fat juicy caterpillars they're disgusting those get hand picked off the plant um, a wonderful treat for the chickens but not a real fun job for us. So we don't spray any pesticides on our tomato plants, so we actually have to pick those off by hand, which is not a fun job. Uh, and speaking of picking, picking isn't always the funnest job to have either. When we grow them in the hoop house, they get to be about 10 feet tall, at least the plants do, um, from the ground up. And it's pretty dense, like a forest, and you just have to kind of wade through the aisles picking the tomatoes. If it's in the hoop house and it's a sunny day, it's anywhere between 100 and 125 degrees inside. Uh, your body is covered in this green yellow hue by the time you're done from the from the plants. So there's a million reasons why picking tomatoes is not fun. Growing tomatoes is not easy. Um, if they get even a little bit too much water on their leaves, whether that's rain or from overhead irrigation, inevitably they're going to get a fungus um, and they get disease and then that wipes out the plants. And so. <sighs> If that isn't exhausting, you've got to wonder why are we growing heirloom tomatoes? Well, because they're delicious, because they're good for you, because we know you guys want them. And so that's part of the reason why. Ah, my notes are blowing away. So before I dig into one of these and just devour it right in front of you, I want to talk to you guys about how to store it. So there are some serious hardcore debates on the internet about whether you should put your tomato in the refrigerator or you should leave them out. And I would love to hear your thoughts below in the comments. I'm interested in what you do. Um, but but here, here's, here's the information that I have from some pretty reputable sources about how to store your tomatoes. So tomatoes, heirloom, beefsteak, hybrid, you name it, doesn't matter what kind it is. Tomatoes, um, once it gets below 50 degrees or 50 degrees or lower, they stop producing those aromatic and flavorful compounds. So they're not producing them anymore. And if you leave them in the refrigerator for too long, say like two days or more, they start to lose the ones they already have. So when we pick our tomatoes, they are picked fairly ripe. Um, sun ripened more flavor right so they're picked fairly ripe if we were to store them in the cooler or if you go home and put them in the fridge you're going to start to lose some of that flavor so put them on the countertop um, if you need to put them in a container if if you've got a fruit fly issue uh, so that's that's my tip on on how to store them i'm trying to think if there's anything else i wanted to talk to you about Oh, nutrition. So I talked about lycopene, great for your skin, tons of vitamin C in tomatoes, but did you know that when you cook a tomato, you actually get more nutrition? And I was shocked by this. I looked it up. I'm going um, to grab my notes because I'm afraid that I'm going to 
forget and give you wrong information. So um, a cooked tomato, so the reason why is because it breaks down the cell wall, making the nutrients more bioavailable. So you actually can, uh, you can get the, the vitamin C and the lycopene a little bit easier, but it also, um, 30 minutes of cooking a tomato doubles the lycopene content. Normally we think of raw foods as being actually healthier for you, but tomatoes, if you cook them, it is better. And I, um, trying to figure out where I wrote that down. It probably just blew away. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry you guys, it's been a long day. It's like 100 degrees outside. Um, I've been up since four. My Some of my team's been up since three o'clock this morning. We're trying to get out and work and beat the heat. It's been absolutely a long week and a really, really long day. So forgive the notes, usually I do this um, a little bit better. <laughs> so anyway, the, the lycopene content doubles when you cook them for at least 30 minutes. It changes the molecular structure, which is kind of cool. So um, the last thing I want to talk to you about is some people peel their tomatoes. Some people take the seeds out of their tomatoes. I've seen some people actually take out the juicy part of the tomato and just eat the flesh without the skin and without the seeds, which seems like an incredible amount of work for a tomato. Um, but don't, don't do that. So there's amino acids in the actual juice of the tomato, so you'll get nutrients that way. Um, there's so many antioxidants in the seeds and the skin of the tomato. 50% of the antioxidants in this tomato are coming from the skin and they're coming from the seeds. So eat the whole darn tomato, okay? <laughs> eat the whole thing. Okay, so I want you guys to come to the farmer's market um, what is today? Thursday. I want you guys to come to the farmer's market on Saturday and try a couple different heirlooms. Just pick out a couple different varieties. Feel free to ask us. We'll tell you which ones are our favorite. If you can find any of the uh, green Cherokees, get the green Cherokees. Um, just pick out a couple and just slice them up and eat them. Maybe a little olive oil and balsamic vinegar with some mozzarella, which is my favorite way, and some basil. I also love to make a cucumber tomato salad with feta. Um, cook them and get all that extra lycopene. That's a great idea. I love to just slice them up and put them on a slice of bread or some pizza or just eat them. Mmm. It's really juicy on the inside of that. This is not your grocery store tomato, friends. Do not miss out on this summertime, wonderful summertime treat. One last thing. If you, for some reason, are like, I don't like tomatoes and you're talking about the tomatoes at the store, maybe that's all you've ever had and you don't like the texture and you don't like the flavor, please try one of these. Just buy a little guy. Just buy a little guy and give it a try because I can promise you these don't taste anything like the ones you get at the store and you might become so spoiled like me you won't ever buy a grocery store tomato again. In fact, when I'm at the restaurant, if they give me a tasteless, unripe slice of tomato on something, I just pick it up, pick it off, and I throw it away. I'm a tomato snob. So anyway, eat it like an apple, dig in, enjoy your heirloom tomatoes, folks. They only are around for a few months every year. They are worth the price. I told you about the work that it takes to grow them and to pick them. Um, stop by at the market, and if you can't find the green Cherokee, uh, pick up one of the striped German. They are also really, really good, too. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.